cancer and biochemistry 20, the citric acid cycle, and isoleucine, methionine, threonine, and valine. Hello, it's March 27, 2019. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, here again in my ongoing video series, Cancer and Biochemistry. In each one of these videos, I examine an aspect of cancer metabolism that looks at the technical considerations as well as practical applications in our lives that can help us detour away from the cancer machinery and to lead our metabolism in the direction of a healthy pathway. My goal is to look at the best ways that we can defend ourselves and our families against the major risk factors leading to cancer. Now we have talked about general considerations of the metabolic pathways shown in this chart by Sigma Aldrich. We have seen that the mitochondrion here is your best defense against cancer. When the mitochondria, plural that is, and mitochondrion, singular, when that functions optimally, you are best able to detour body processes away from a cancer pathway. There are about 10,000 electron transport chains in each mitochondrion under optimal conditions. And when these are functioning well, they crowd body resources away from the cancer machinery here. Those 10,000 electron transport chains are hungry to bring metabolism into the mitochondria rather than toward the cancer pathway. So we want to fuel this machinery because this is the normal machine. This one is the alternative to cancer. So let's go down here and not over here. We also saw that when pathways inside the mitochondria are blocked, that is, if there are obstacles here, like a deficiency of nutrients, plus too much sugar in the system, then metabolism gets forced over here to the cancer pathway. Then, in later videos, we saw that the citric acid cycle, which is a necessary part of normal healthy metabolism, requires a lot of different amino acids in order to continue strongly. This slide from BioInfo shows where a lot of these amino acids come into the citric acid cycle. Even though the citric acid cycle goes around in circles, it doesn't mean that it's pointless. Rather, we need a variety of different amino acids in order to drive the cycle or to get it moving around because we need to oxidize this molecule here, acetyl-CoA, and to harvest or to make use of the end products of the citric acid cycle. And these are really helpful and useful to what comes next. The purpose of the citric acid cycle is that we derive two important products from it, and those are NADH and FADH2. The benefit of that, in turn, is that these two molecules each have electrons available to be used in the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain, in turn, drives oxidative phosphorylation. So what starts all of this activity are the amino acids that feed the citric acid cycle. So again, we get these amino acids from the proteins that we eat. Proteins are very long and winding chains of amino acids, like beads on a necklace. We make some of them inside of our bodies, but really only if we've eaten enough of the healthy natural foods to have the necessary raw materials. Other amino acids, such as histidine, must be obtained from food. That is, we need to eat proteins, which can be broken down into these amino acids that we need. Carbohydrates do not go far enough to get all of the proteins you need to break down to the necessary amino acids. You actually have to eat protein also. Today I want to look at the four amino acids that enter here in the citric acid cycle. Those four are needed to make succinyl-CoA, which is a necessary intermediate in the citric acid cycle. Those four amino acids include the highly valued branch chain amino acid isoleucine. In this image from ChemSpider, we see that isoleucine looks like this and is found in these foods pictured here, meat, chicken, and fish. We also need methionine, a hugely important amino acid because of its sulfur content and its ability to be used to make cysteine to help clear toxins from the liver. But that is not really relevant to this discussion. Methionine is drawn here by PubChem. Chicken and fish are high in methionine. So those are the first two of four amino acids that go to make succinyl-CoA in the citric acid cycle. Here are the next two. Threonine is another essential amino acid, meaning that we cannot make it. We must obtain it from food. Threonine is especially valued in its role in the nervous system and has been essential in such illnesses as multiple sclerosis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. It also has a great defense against fatty liver. All of the meats, 
are high in the amino acid threonine. I must sound like carnivores are us to the vegans who have tuned in. Valine, like isoleucine, is another branch chain amino acid, so well appreciated among the physically fit for muscle recovery after exercise. For valine, again, the meats are valuable, as well as cheese. Well, those are the four amino acids, isoleucine, methionine, threonine, and valine, that together go to make succinyl CoA, which is a necessary step in the citric acid cycle, which in turn is necessary to produce the fuels for the electron transport chain. In order to drive the healthy metabolism along a good road here and away from the cancer pathway here. So that wraps up this segment in Cancer and Biochemistry number 20. It's March 27, 2019. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, and thanks for watching.